Good morning, I'm Austin Griffith. So I'm headed south to Denver today to teach at Andreas Antonopoulos' blockchain training conference in Denver. But I just wanted to maybe just like do a speed run through my curriculum just to kind of uh, cover it for Bowtie Friday, you know? Something to do. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna be teaching like rapid dap development. So uh, I am going to do a workshop where we fire up Ganache, uh, what, what I'm thinking I'll do is make like a nifty DAO, so it's like a DAO that will vote on nifties and then the nifties can be minted and then bought and sold on a bonding curve. That's a lot to get through in 50 minutes, so I have kind of like two tracks. Basically, uh, we get them set up with Clevis and they can do a Clevis version and they can see that like my tools are working. Uh, they'll, they'll do an NPM start and they'll fire up their front end. Uh, and then maybe like send some, and I, and I don't know if like the whole group will participate in this or uh, they, they can, if they want, like it should be like line for line. Everything is in this, this article, but we should see there it sent him some money. Uh, so they could, if they wanted to, then we'll do, uh, like a, we'll create a smart contract and we'll just set like some kind of like purpose within a smart contract. And then we will compile and deploy that. And then over in the front end, you will see it show up. So the, the key to, to my rapid prototyping tooling is being able to kind of work in parallel between your smart contracts and your front end. And we'll, I'll try to illustrate that while we're, while we're building this. So, so then you'll like bring in a contract loader. You'll show that it's like loading your contracts. You'll show that the transactions are showing up. Um, you'll be able to basically just get that to display. And then the, the, the key here is like being able to show the, the dev loop. So if I go to the contract here and I add some exclamation points, oh, okay, let's take them off because I added them last time. Just the whole point is to show that uh, with, within you know, a very small amount of time, you can iterate on your contracts and have that displayed into the front end. We'll see. We'll see it go, basically it's going to compile the contract, it's going to deploy the contract, it's going to inject the contract into the front end, and then it's going to reload the contract. And so we'll see those exclamation points disappear from the front end. And that's, ta-da, that's basically the dev loop. So the key is we want to be able to iterate on that and do that and add things to the, the, the contract as we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of go lightning mode and I'll just skip basically there are a handful of commits that I that I will go through and I'll, I'll go through line by line with them but uh, there's no point in in us doing that here you don't you don't want me to go line by line through my code slowly typing but uh, let's see let's check out this uh, commit ooh see this is this is why you would not want me to be oh come on I don't know what the, oh Good morning, I'm Austin Quinn. There we go, okay, so this commit basically brings in this section of the smart contract. It, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it here. Uh, it, basically it sets up members. We wanna set up like a minimum viable DAO, even even more minimum than a minimum viable DAO, like, a, like nothing at all. So, so basically what we, what we have here is we have members, we have a member count, uh, we have votes and whether or not they voted. And so what happens is a member can add another member and if they call add member and they don't, that member doesn't have enough votes, it just kind of adds up. So everybody in the DAO has to call add member on a specific address and then that member will be added as a new member and the member count or quorum will, will increase. So let's do a Clevis test full. If, if you want, we can dive into these contracts just a little bit more. Can I zoom in? Oh, that's nice. So yeah, so you've got a list of members, you have a member count, uh, and then each member will uh, be able to basically like vote, right? Like to be able to add a member, you have to be a member. The person you're adding can't be a member. Uh, you can't have already voted for that person. If And then as soon as you do, they set that to true, increase the votes. And then if you happen to be above or at the member count, which it, you know should be equals there, but you know, programming. It will actually just paste that new member in and increase the member count. So uh, we can see that over here. Uh, so the first member is actually going to be, if I do Clevis accounts, it's going to be my first guy, uh, my uh, basically my ganache dude. That's this dude here. So right now the only active member is the ganache, like the command line 
user and he is he hasn't added anybody yet but if we go ahead and copy this dude's address and I do uh, let's just go ahead and add this guy in we should see him show up uh, in the front end there we go so now we have two members of our DAO if we tried to add a third member uh, let me bring this dude in down here so we've got a third member here uh, both both people will have to vote on this third member. So I'll have to add him here, and I'll have to add him here for this to, to work. Ready, go. Do, do, do. There we go. So basically you got you have an operational UI that's able to add members. Uh, at the very end, I have like a, a, the ability to exit and, and have members leave, uh, but uh, that won't be part of this commit. So here's the UI. Basically it's pulling to pull in the members. Uh, it, it's uh, like old school React. I'm learning all sorts of new stuff now, but this is kind of the way Clevis and Apparatus works. I'll have to upgrade it soon. Uh, but basically, yeah, that's the UI for adding the member, and that's how it works. And so the next piece is going to be the non-fungible side. So what we'll, what we'll do, let me just go ahead and go to the next commit and pull that down. Do, 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 do. And all of this is public. Anybody can jump in and grab this. So I'll check that out and I'll do a Clevis test full. So in this next commit, what we want to do is bring in good now to also be an NFT contract. So owner of transfer from all that kind of stuff. And, and not an ERC-20, ERC but an ERC-721. So each token has individual metadata and an owner and, uh, you know, is, is non-fungible, right? So, uh, and, and a URI, right? Like this, this kind of like web link is, is sort of the metadata of the token. And, and normally that's like a JSON file, but I'll probably just use like images the, this whole thing is about running through it quickly and kind of like cutting corners and making it easy and simple. But, uh, you know, this, the, I don't deploy this to production, right? We're just quickly jamming through this. Uh, and then the front end, uh, we'll, we'll need some kind of UI to allow the members of the DAO to vote in the, the URI. So, so for instance, this is a URI from my ETH Denver tokens. We'll just use those. So uh, let's see. Let's see what the front end looks like now. Yep, exactly. So now, now not only can members add new members, but they can also add in uh, a URI and a price and a curve. And we'll get to the price and the curve later on. But basically, I can copy this, and we'll do. We'll just call add token. And since I'm the only member of the DAO at this point, like the command line is the only member. I redeployed everything. That's why the this guy and the other guy disappeared. But uh, so now he's the only member and he's able to add a token. So he added the hippo and, and basically it's just a URI that, that is now, a, that we want to now be available for minting, right? So, so basically you, you want the DAO to be able to pick out what kind of tokens can be bought and sold from, from, from the DAO basically. So uh, yeah, so what, what we do there is there's an event that is fired when, when new, uh, let's just go look at the contract real quick. Uh, so yeah, so here it is. So we've got a token price and a token curve, which we'll cover later. The point here is the URI. So we've got voted in tokens, and this is all tracked by string. And the string is the 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 web link, the URI. So we we track um, who's voted in with a bool. We track votes on the tokens, and then whether or not you have voted on the token. So then same, same thing with the way we do add member, we're just gonna do add token, where you can add a URL at a price and a curve, and uh, if, if that already exists, it has to be equal to the price and the curve that someone else has already voted in. So kind of, there, there's some obvious like caveats here, but like it's about rapid application prototyping, right? We're trying to build something quick. So, so basically you, you are able to add in a token and an allowed URI by voting it in. And basically you vote it in. And if there's multiple members, they all have to vote in the same parameters as you. But if they vote for the same thing, it gets votes. And then if you get enough votes to reach the member count, uh, you know, everyone has to, to agree, then that token becomes voted in.
and that's uh, that's what happened here. It's basically the one out of one in the in the DAO voted it in, and so uh, that's that's that step. And we can uh, maybe look. Let's see what else is left. So for the UI, we're going to do some polling of. Let's see. We we load in the event, so an event is fired there. That's what I was going for. This event is fired when a new token is created. And then we parse through all of those looking for the URI and the price and the curve, and then uh, we display them. And that's basically uh, that commit. So the last or the third major commit um, is going to be uh, what, what I call the DeFi. So it's hardly, it's hardly DeFi, but uh, since, since there was a lot of cool hackathons, uh, hackathon projects at ETH Berlin and they kind of covered uh, DeFi, DAOs, Nifties. I wanted to kind of like get something that kind of touches all those things a little bit. So uh, what we need is buying and selling tokens. Let me grab this commit and Clevis test full. Okay, cool. So uh, what we do in this one is set up the contract so people can buy and sell tokens. So once, once a URI is voted in, once the whole DAO says, okay, it's cool for us to vote, it's cool, we want to start basically selling hippos, hippo collectibles, hippo NFTs. They all vote in hippo, and then uh, now we start tracking a count, and that count starts at zero, and people can buy them. And what happens when you buy them is, uh, basically it has to be voted in, so you can't be asking for a token URI that doesn't exist. Uh, and then what we do is you and you have to pay for it. You have to pay the initial value, and that's the price that we passed in. Remember the price and the curve, and it's not even really a curve. It's like this linear step. And since it's uh, you know NFTs, it's like a nice discrete step. I don't have to do calculus and stuff in my in my bonding curve. So it's more like a bonding line. I don't I don't know if that's a thing, but basically uh, you'll see what happens here is. If, if everything is right for a token to be minted, we we uh, uh, we add one to the count, and then we add the curve to the price. So if the price starts at 25 cents, and then the curve is like one cent, then the, tr tr the price for the next one would go up to 26 cents. And same thing when you sell, it's going to burn the token, and it's going to decrement the count, and also uh, it, it will decrement the price by the curve before you get the money, right? Because if it did it after, you could like buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. So, so that's my that's my DeFi <laughs> in my project. And uh, let's go let's go check out the front end and see how it all looks. So let's just I think at this point it's probably good. At, let's see. Let's let's go ahead and add in the hippo again and just see how it works and then we'll do we'll pull in the full thing and do a full demo with the uh, the ability to exit out of the DAO. Okay, so you can see that if this was on XDAI I'd have $2.47 or 2.47 ETH whatever. I am kind of assuming that this is more of an XDAI thing and that's kind of kind of the way I roll. So so let's buy that for 0.25. We'll see that I get one and we'll see that the price goes up by again. We'll see that I get two. So, so we're seeing the price is increasing, and I'm owning these NFTs. And if I sell them, I sell them back at the price that I bought them for. But if you can imagine a bunch of people buying and selling, sort of that that bonding curve kind of comes into effect. Bonding line, that bonding line. Okay, so the last, the very last commit, I just added in a few things, and we probably won't get to this in the curriculum of the class. So I added in, um, oh yeah, and there's a nice disclaimer at the end too, but I added in the uh, ability to uh, exit out of the DAO and just some, so a few like little last cleanups, but uh, let's do Clevis, check out that guy. Okay, and I think that's basically the latest commit, so that should be like, we, we should be up to date. Let's do a Clevis test full. So yeah, I'll be going through this line by line uh, at, in Denver at the event, and kind of uh, there's there's two different paths. There's sort of a path where we could diverge and kind of just talk about. Let's see, where do I do that? We we can we can diverge and just kind of go through. 
uh, like slower smart contract techniques like this is what a payable function looks like or or we can dive into this and kind of build something with a little bit more meat to it it'll kind of be up to the class and what what they decide and what pace they want to go at i've looked at the schedule and there's already like at least someone else doing remix so i feel like if i just kind of dance around with smart contracts they've probably seen that with remix already i think it'd be best to kind of show off the Clevest apparatus rapid prototyping uh, tool set. So let's see, let's, let's, get, let's get a few people in on this. We're gonna bring my Safari in on this. Notice Safari, no, no MetaMask. Uh, that's that's kind of nice. And, and this guy, they, they kind of look the same. Their blockies look the same, but these are two different people. So we've got my Chrome here, we've got my Safari here, and then we have uh, my command line here. So. Let's run through the whole thing. So let's add let's add this dude as a member. Okay. So he's going to uh, add member to the nifty DAO, this guy. And since he's the only member, it'll be added automatically. Then we'll add this second member. Do you remember? I remember. Uh, let's do that guy. And then if both people add the member, we should see him show up. There we go. So now we have three people. Now, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to exit the DAO with this dude. Because I don't want to mess around with... Oh. Uh-oh. Uh, exit is not... Did I not compile it? Oh, no. Exit is not a member. Did I not commit it? Uh... Uh-oh, maybe I blew away those changes. Uh, what if I do git checkout master? Is that a thing? Git pull, all right, there. Now the exit's gonna be there. All right, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's do it again. Hopefully this doesn't happen uh, when we're when we're live at the, the event. I have 50 minutes to run through all of this stuff. E e emoji. Okay, so. Uh, the new changes are basically there is this exit, this exit function that allows a member to kind of step away. Since since it requires like full voting of everyone, I figured I would add an exit, and and it also helps me because I don't have to use my command line so much, right? The command line guy. So then instead of having just a member count, there's also a quorum. So we keep track of member account for IDs, but we also have a quorum. Okay, so let's do that again. All right, here we go. We're gonna add this dude to the DAO. So we're gonna say, add. and this would actually probably even be, um, like happen at deployment. Like basically I would add, um, I would add this guy in, in a script when it deploys it and then remove myself. I'm just gonna do that now, just to make sure this works. Exit, okay, so now he should be out. Boom. Yes, okay. And then this dude wants to add in this dude. So so the point of the DAO voting in these would be that like not one person has full control of what gets minted. And and that's kind of a key aspect here. You want to have a lot of people kind of voting in whether or not this token URI like should we allow this URI to be minted? Cuz like if it was just one dude, I could like take a selfie of myself and put that on a token and maybe you don't want that to be part of the, the ecosystem, right? So you need like multiple members voting on whether or not this new token URI could come in. I wish those weren't so close together, the look of them. The look of them makes it look like they're the same. Okay, so now we've got these two voting members and they're like, all right, what do we want to bring in? Let's bring in fish. Let's bring in a fish. So these are my collectibles from East Denver and we're gonna start his price at 50 cents and his curve is going to increase basically 10% each time someone buys. It's not 10%, it's like up five, five cents. Uh, yep, let's add that token. Same thing over here. So it'd be 0.5 and 0.05 and add token and that should be enough to get it to show up. Boom. Okay, and then let's add in hippo. And let's have him be 0.25 and have him go up a penny. Okay, and my forms don't clear because I was, it, it was like better for debugging. And honestly, it's a proof of concept, right? Shows off how it works, doesn't have to be super uh, perfect. Uh-oh, 
Oh, I was going to say it didn't work, but it did. Okay, cool. There we go. So we've brought in members of a DAO. Those members have been able to vote each other in or new people in. Uh, one guy has exited. The DAO has picked uh, these collectibles, uh, Hippo and Fish. And uh, you can buy these collectibles on a curve. So let's say this guy buys two Hippos. Boop, 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 ba doo I'm buying some Hippos and maybe one fish. And then this dude uh, buys, he can only afford one hippo. So the price of the hippo will go up as this guy purchases it. And then this guy could sell his hippo. Uh oh, something happened there. It must not have bought and purchased enough. Or it's, the, U, the UI is like way behind here. Probably because I'm pulling everything. It's uh, it's so gross, but it's like looping through all the tokens. Pulling, it, it's not good. Okay, so I think I sold one. Maybe I didn't. Let's let's try to sell one more. There, there's a ton of room for uh, you know, cleanup here. But it's about like getting it to work at first and seeing how it works and going back and forth with your contract and your UI in parallel. There we go. So he sold he sold that hippo. And uh, he, he will he will have actually turned a profit because the other dude bought the hippo. So that's that's on the that's on the the bonding line. So uh, I think that's basically it. Uh, I'll be at the training later today. Come check it out. I think it's like uh, 10 a.m. to 10:40 a.m. Uh, in Denver. Um, disclaimer, there are a bunch of reasons why this thing should not be in production. There's a demonstration of how fast a proof of concept can be built. Going the distance to production is an entirely different beast. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, happy Bowtie Friday. Hopefully I'll see someone in Denver. Hmm? 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 Can't have a beer because i got to drive home. Wife's about to have a baby. All right. Happy Bowtie Friday.